reloading, not rebuilding. That, no question, ladies and gentlemen, is the motto of Alabama football. It doesn't matter how many players they lose to the NFL. All you got to do is just look at one particular year. Just pick any year you want in the 2000 teens, and you'll see that the Tide lose a lot of starters. Many of them go on to bigger and better things in the NFL, and yet that still doesn't stop Alabama from winning and getting themselves in national championship contention. And, of course, uh, three times this decade, They've won the whole thing under Nick Saban. And of course, they won the whole thing under him back in 2009 as well. Nick Saban, four national titles with the Tide, five overall. The greatest coach that we've seen in college football in this generation. He'll be one of the greatest of all time once it's all said and done, if he's not already. But Bama, the philosophy is, you know, they know they're going to lose a lot of players in the NFL. But who cares? Because they've got players waiting in the wings. You know, guys that got experience from the year before, waiting to start and then waiting for their shot in the NFL and it's back to square one. And the Tide, again, will have the talent to get all the way to that college football playoff national championship. You've already seen the new AP and coaches polls. Well, they've given the Tide the ultimate respect, number one, number uno in both polls. Looking offensively, of course, um, you know, Nick Saban knew that he was going to need a new offensive coordinator, which is probably the most pressure-cooking offensive coordinator position in college football to coach under the very demanding but successful Nick Saban. So bring in Brian DeBall, you know, former assistant, longtime um, coach in the NFL, but a uh, former assistant under Bill Belichick with the New England Patriots. Yeah, they're not a bad team at all. <laughs> and the one thing I heard that, that uh, DeBall really specializes in, amongst other things, is the ground attack, and he was very instrumental with the Patriots in that. Um, no doubt that's going to really help the Crimson Tide because they're loaded at running back, and that's been the case throughout the Saban era in Tuscaloosa. We'll talk more about the ground game in a second, but first got to talk about the passing attack and Jalen Hurts, who made the opposing defense hurt and beg for mercy sometimes. You know, Hurts was last year's SEC Offensive Player of the Year. His stats for a dual-threat quarterback in year number one, dazzling. You know, threw for almost 2,800 yards, you know, had 36 combined touchdowns, 23 through the air with only nine picks, and rushed for almost 1,000 yards. The one thing, though, watching Jalen Hurts at the end of the season, he didn't throw the ball uh, with near as much success. So even though I know Brian DeBall is, you know, probably more of a run oriented type coordinator than a passing one, you know, having the NFL professional experience wisdom of a DeBall can't hurt the overall game of Jalen Hurts. And by the way, if Jalen Hurts were to get hurt, no pun intended, and you certainly don't want that to happen. But it is worth bringing up, you know, the quarterback depth for Alabama, it's not going to be a positive because they've only got three scholarship quarterbacks on this team, including Hurts. The other two are true freshmen in Tua, Tunga, Viola, and in Mac Jones. Mac Jones more of a um, pro-style quarterback. Uh, Tua kind of like uh, Jalen Hurts, a dual-threat QB, but both of those backups are true freshmen. You got to remember the tide over the seasons, you know, you know, recently, you know, lost three quarterbacks to transfer, you know, Blake Barnett at Arizona State. You know, you got um, Cooper Bateman at Utah and um, David Cornwell, who played his high school ball in this very city of Norman from Norman North. You know, he's now at uh, Nevada. So quarterback depth uh, could be an issue if Jalen Hurts ever got hurt. But let's hope he has a healthy 2017. As far as the receivers, Calvin Ridley, he was electrifying, led the team in receptions with 72 and had seven touchdowns. You have him back, but you do lose um, Ardarius Stewart. He's a big-time loss. He's off to the NFL. We'll see if Robert Foster can chip in and close out his career on a high note. Two years ago, he was the number one option. That was until a shoulder injury, which really plagued him at that point. Uh, Jerry Judy, I think, is going to factor in just fine. Uh, the product from Florida, five-star recruit. I think he will play as a true freshman. And closing out his career will be Cam Sims, a senior who had uh, 14 receptions last year. Looking at the ground game, it is going to be lethal. They're very deep in this area. Uh, Damian Harris had over 1,000 yards rushing a year ago and over 7 yards per carry. Bo Scarborough had over 800 yards rushing. And then you've got Josh Jacobs, who played his high school ball not far from here, two hours at the Turnpike I-44 at Tulsa McLean. Um, had 14 touchdowns a year ago. And Najee Harris, one of the top high school running backs in the country out of California, I think he'll figure into the mix as well as a true freshman. Talking about the offensive line, yeah, Bama, they got one of the best lines in the country. Tell me when you haven't heard that before. Even though they lose Cam Robinson, he was a first-round draft pick, but don't think that the Tide will still not possess 
a wall up front. I'm talking about left tackle Jonah Williams, who last year you know, was a full-time starter as a right tackle. Not bad for last year being a true freshman. Now, left guard, he's a returning starter too. Ross Pierce Baker, a redshirt junior who's played a total of 30 games in his career. And at center, Bradley Bozeman entering his fifth and final year as a redshirt senior, started all 15 games last year. Now, remember the Tide last year were number two in the SEC when it came to running the ball, only behind Auburn, averaging 245 yards per game on the ground. So, again, that ground game is going to be lethal. The right side of the line, not as experienced with Lester Cotton, who started five games, played 12 last year, who be at the right guard. Of course, this last year, not the best offseason uh, for the guy back in February, uh, got caught with a second-degree possession of marijuana. And at right tackle, they can go with either Alex Leatherwood, um, a five-star recruit who could start as a freshman at that right tackle position. Remember, last year, the Tide started Jonah Williams at right tackle. At that time, he was a true freshman. Or they could go with a guy with a little more experience in Matt Womack, a redshirt sophomore who played in nine games a year ago. The tight end spot, there's no way in hell they're going to be as good in this area because you lose one of the better tight ends we've seen in the wild in college football in O.J. Howard. He was a first-round uh, draft pick. So you have to replace um, Howard with either uh, Hale Hinges, a junior who did see quite a bit of action last year, or you can go with the guy that did start two games for the Crimson Tide in 2016, and that is Miller uh, Ferristone, who now enters – um, his sophomore year. Again, uh, this is a guy that did not redshirt, uh, started a couple of games as a freshman in 2016. So. Did Jeremy Pruitt's defense come ready to play? Well, that was typically the case with Alabama defense because they were tops in the country in 2016 in both points allowed, only giving up 13 per game, as well as rushing yards allowed, just 64 per contest. Wow. Now, that's the good news out of that 3 4 alignment. The bad news, though, Five of the seven have to be replaced, and you lost um, all of them to the NFL. That includes the two defensive linemen. Uh, you lost Jonathan Allen as well as Dalvin Tomlinson. So the only full-time starter back up front is the nose guard, but he's a good one, and Deron Payne, now a junior, 36 tackles a year ago. We'll see how the two defensive ends do as new full-time starters, but they do have plenty of PT. Um, last year, uh, Deshaun Hand had... Uh, 21 stops to go for his 34 tackles for his career, now entering his senior year. And also a senior in Joshua Frazier, whom a year ago played in 14 games and has played in 20 so far in his career. So these guys uh, definitely looking at the chops to become full-time starters. Now they get their chance. The linebackers, three of them are gone, all in the NFL. Yeah, what a shock, right? <laughs> Ruben Foster, the hard-hitting Ruben Foster. Uh, you lose him along with Ryan Anderson and Tim Williams. So the only full-time starter back is the inside linebacker who will play strong side is Sean Dion Hamilton. 64 tackles a year ago. Of course, he uh, tore the ACL last year in the SEC Championship game against Florida. So really watch for him. Um, outside linebacker, uh, you have Christian Miller, who... Um, Played all 15 games last season and now entering his redshirt junior year. Anthony Jennings, a redshirt sophomore, um, you have him. Had 19 tackles a year ago, played all 15 games as well. And rounding out the Alabama linebackers at the uh, middle linebacker, Rashawn Evans, four interceptions a year ago and 52 tackles. So even though you have to replace three full-time starters, remember, um, you have a senior, redshirt sophomore, redshirt junior, guys with at least two years of playing experience, a lot of games behind them in that Alabama defensive scheme. So they'll still be very good, mark my word. And the secondary is going to be excellent, even though you lose the um, safety in uh, Eddie Jackson. He's a notable loss along with the corner in Marlon Humphrey. But the safeties could be the best in college football still. Minka Fitzpatrick, enjoy him now, Bama fans, because I think he's bolting for the NFL next year. In fact, I think he'll be a first-round draft pick if his play continues like it is. 66 tackles and a whopping six interceptions last year. And Ronnie Harrison complimenting him with the other safety with 86 tackles and a couple of picks. You have one cornerback in Anthony Everett. 48 stops a year ago, the senior. And running out the secondary for the Crimson Tide is uh, Trevon Diggs, the one-time, the one-time receiver. He'll also be returning punts as well. And so far, it looks like he's converted to the corner nicely. And one more name I need to mention, too, he'll see playing time is Tony Brown, um, a senior who had 32 tackles and two picks a year ago. So he'll have some uh, playing time coming up, too. Special teams, well, we'll see how the place kicking looks during the uh, spring game 
if uh, that's indicative of what's to come, the Bama really needs to get this area fixed soon because they were not uh, too consistent at all with place kicking. But the punting game looks terrific. And as you can see, the uh, punter last year, um, very high accolades for him. Highlighting the Alabama schedule, look, the Tigers are going to be favored in every game that you see on that screen. In many of these games, they are going to be double-digit favorites. Now, the toughest games appear to be the opener, September the 2nd, against Florida State. That's right, the first game of the year, the third-ranked Seminoles and the number one tie. What a way to begin 2017, that game at Atlanta. The other game that I think will be the toughest will be the last one, November 25th, and a game that will have SEC West implications against hated Auburn at Auburn in the Iron Bowl. Even games against Texas A&M on the road, at home against LSU, and at Mississippi State, well, as long as Alabama plays like well, Bama, then those games should have Alabama in the winner's column as well. Vegas says 10.5 wins for Alabama. You can call this a stretch on my behalf, but who's going to beat the Tide? I mean, Alabama has more talent than any of those 12 teams that you saw on that schedule. I've got Bama winning all 12 of them and facing Georgia for the SEC championship. Now, I will have my college football playoff preview show coming up on August the 30th, so check that out. That will include my pick for the SEC championship, as well as the four teams that I think will be in the college football playoff, and, of course, my winner for the college football playoff. For the opposition facing Alabama, you better bring your A-plus game, anything short of that, and it will be game, set, match in the Tide's favor. That's my look at Alabama. See you next time.